12, 19, 12, 29, Deuteronomy 29. We have a biblical account of God making an agricultural unfit to raise anything because he made the ground salty. And kings tended to sow salt in agricultural areas so towns couldn't exist. So that's using salt in a negative way. We uh, know from Ezekiel that when babies were born in the Old Testament, they were washed and then they were coated with salt or treated with salt, washed with salt, as it were, as an anesthetic. So that's a good reference to salt. In the book of James, he says that it is unlikely that the same mouth could bring forth blessing and cursing. It's as likely as a well brings forth salt water and uh, fresh water. That's a negative reference. And then in Colossians it says, let your speech also always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. That is a positive reference. So is Jesus referring to salt or making salt a positive or a negative reference in this verse? And that's part of what we are unpacking to figure out what the universal lesson is. Salt is used in Scripture as to, to refer to uh, seasoning, preserving, and purifying. Those are the good reasons. And it's also used in, to talk about death, to talk about desolation, and as a curse. This little sermonette that, that Jesus preaches occurs in all three gospel accounts, which means that it's something he must have talked about a lot, and it's something that's important. I want to briefly look at all three of those together, or the, the other three if you haven't already read. If I could have the Matthew version, this is in 513. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. And then here's the Mark reference. For everyone will be salted with fire. Interesting statement. Salt is good, but if the salt becomes unsalty, with what will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourself and be at peace with one another. Clearly, this is a reference to salting of food. So, do I have any cooks in the room? How do we use salt when it comes to the kitchen? There are two primary ways that salt is used in the kitchen, or in reference to food. Can anyone tell me what the two ways are? Seasoning, tenderizing. Um, that's, that's correct. The second use is we, we don't do it much anymore, and that is salting to preserve. You know, uh, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, they would salt fish and keep it in a barrel as they went on ships and so forth. Let's bring, um, let's bring us back to speed on what's happening in the Luke passage. Now, Jesus has just had lunch at a Pharisee's house. He's come back out of these crowds that formed so much that he can't even move. And last week we looked at, at all of the things he said are required of people who follow him. And he said all those harsh things about hating your mother and father and your brother and sister because he wanted to drive away the pretenders. And he's driven away all the pretenders. And now the poor group is left. The 12 apostles are there. The 200 faithful men and women that follow him and support him. And he turns to them and he says, you are the salt of the earth. That is a universal statement, by the way. It is does not apply just to that culture and that situation. It's a statement to you and I. You are the salt of the earth. Now you and I include that phrase in our English language. We will talk about people. I meant to ask Lynn Addison if, if he was here today, I was going to use him, but I'm going to use him anyway since he's not here. I would say that Lynn Addison is a salt of the earth kind of guy. Amen? Yes. Now what did I just say about Lynn? He's a good guy. What else did I say? Faithful. What else did I say? Godly. Godly. We use that expression to talk about somebody who is straight shooting. Somebody who, this, you see what you get. Um, but that's not what Jesus is referring to when he says that you are the salt of the earth. Let's say Lynn is a good guy, an honest guy, a straight talker, no God, no deceit, decent, humble, no pretenses, long-suffering. That's the di dictionary definition of that phrase. But that's not what Jesus means. He means something entirely different when he says, we are the salt of the earth. 
Let's go back and look at the two primary uses of salt. To season, to make things better tasting, and to preserve. Somewhere in the common uses of salt, we find the universal lesson from this passage. You are the salt of the earth. You are to preserve the faith. You are to change what you touch. However, describing it, putting salt on food makes the taste different from what it tasted like before you added salt. It turns out that salt lowers the bitterness in the food and intensifies the sweetness of the food. I didn't know that before this week. What Jesus is saying is that those people who understand who he is, those people who have made a faith decision about him, have a faith story, have something to share. You and I are the salt of the earth. We are the means by which change occurs for Jesus Christ. But how does salt change anything? It doesn't change anything when it's in the shape of Salt in the shaker is full of potential and useless. Why didn't Jesus use flour or honey or sugar as an example? Why salt? Do you uh, answer this question? It's a yes or no question. Can you live your entire life and be healthy without sugar, flour, or honey? Yes or no? Yes. Can you live your entire life and be healthy without salt? Yes or no? no? No. You have to have salt. It has to come from somewhere. Salt is life-giving. Salt not only preserves and changes, it is life-giving. What in this package is Jesus trying to teach us? You are the salt of the earth. And what is the primary purpose of salt? To enhance the taste to change what it touches, and to preserve. In there somewhere is the universal lesson. Over the past two minutes, take everything you've heard and wrap it together, and you will find the universal lesson. Salt brings out the best of everything it touches. It does its work silently. One grain at a time, in a very small area, it makes things better where it is located, and the difference it makes is not discernible to the eye. Salt changes what it touches. You are the salt of the earth. Salt in the shaker is worthless. A plus B equals C. What's the point? What are we supposed to do? What is it that Jesus is trying to teach us? Get out of the salt shaker. Encounter the world. Change the people one person at a time, one moment at a time, where you are. You are the salt of the earth. Salt changes what it touches. It changes nothing when it touches nothing. You are useless to God if you're in the salt shaker. In one sense, this is the salt shaker. In another sense, your comfortable little life, your little circle where you live and operate is your salt shaker. God, Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the means by which my work gets done. You are the means by which people come to know Jesus Christ. Nothing happens if you stay in your safe, comfortable zone and never speak to anybody and never change anybody and never help anybody. Christianity, by definition, cannot be lived in isolation. You cannot love without having someone to love. You cannot forgive without having an object to forgive. You cannot be generous without having someone to be generous to. You cannot show kindness unless there's someone to show kindness to. We are designed to live out Christianity in the community of others. We are put in a specific spot, in a specific time frame, in a specific community, for a specific reason, by the God who created us. And we were shown who Jesus Christ is through a, a series of events that you can't possibly imagine happened accidentally. And why was that all happening? So that you could be the salt of the earth where you are, one grain at a time, one moment at a time. Jesus is teaching a universal lesson that has great application. As God's minister, I am here to season you. 
I am here to change you and preserve you as I allow the Holy Spirit to speak through me. But each of us are also salt. And we are to change the people that we touch where we live. How do we do that? What exactly did Jesus mean by saying you're the salt of the earth? If you have walked with Jesus Christ, you have a story to tell. This is a theme that you've been hearing over the last three or four weeks. A theme of 2019 about your faith story, about sharing your story, about sharing your answered prayers. When we get together, when we're in a small group and in, inside of the salt shaker, we share our stories with each other. We share about answered prayers. But do you share answered prayers with the people out there? Do you share with them anything that happened inside of the salt shaker about something that you heard or saw or felt? We have a story to share. Our, the story of our life experience, of our encounter with Jesus Christ, was given to us not necessarily for our benefit, but to share our testimony, our witness, our faith experience needs to be shared. The fourth thing I was led to say this morning is, by the way, where do you keep the salt shaker in the house? Do you keep it in the garage? Do you keep the salt shaker in the garage? Raise your hand if you keep the salt shaker in the garage. Why don't you keep the salt shaker in the garage? Huh? The car doesn't need it. <laughs> where do you keep the salt shaker? In the kitchen, in the dining room, somewhere nearby, somewhere close to the food. And why do you do that? That's where you use it. You use salt where the food is. Right? We are The fourth thing that Jesus is trying to teach us today is that we need to be near where the food is. We need to be, the salt shaker needs to be where the food is. We need to spread the salt where the food is. Where is the food? You and I ate the food. We're the salt. The food's out there. The food that needs to be changed, the meat that needs to be preserved, the, 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 the food that needs to be enhanced, it's out there. We've got to get out of the box and change the world for Jesus Christ. And there is no if, ands, or buts about it. I heard Andy Stanley say this week, if we don't get to work doing what we're called to do, Christianity will be a dead religion in, in 50 years, maybe even in 20. That's no joke, folks. And why is it going to die? Because they don't see any difference in us. They don't hear about our faith story. Finally, fifth and last, salt loses its saltiness under certain conditions. In the two verses that I quoted from Luke, Jesus says, if salt loses its saltiness, it's not any good to sow into the ground. It's not even good to keep manure fresh. You all keep salt in your manure and keep it fresh, amen? <laughs> If salt isn't any good to change the food, to see the food, it's not even worth sowing in the ground to kill crops. It's not even worth mixing with the manure to keep the manure fresh so we can use it as an organic uh, fertilizer. In fact, once salt loses its saltiness, it's only worth one thing. Many people have been to the Middle East and have seen how salt was stored. And it's, it's often stored on, on a dirt floor, and the bottom layer gets of no value. The dirt chemically uh, reacts with the salt, and that last four or five inches, they just take it out and they throw it out into the road in front of the house. Because they don't want anything growing out there, and that's all it's good for, is to throw it out to be trod underfoot. We have to be very careful that we don't stay in the salt shaker so long that we lose our saltiness. What is our saltiness? Our faith story. We can get so comfortable with who we are and where we are that we no longer are having any experience with Jesus Christ. We no longer have any prayers being answered. We don't have any miracles occurring in our lives. We don't have anything to testify to. We can get so comfortable in our salt shaker, we aren't worth anything. We've got to be real careful we don't get there, folks. We have to testify to what has happened in our lives if we want to change the world and if we want to continue to exist as a body of faith. Once salt loses its saltiness, it isn't worth anything. Now, 
I have covered an enormous amount of ground in a very short period of time. And I want to, I want to summarize what I was trying to teach or what I think I was led to teach this morning. There were five points to this message, even though I didn't pop, this is one, this is two. Number one, if we have a genuine encounter with the living Jesus Christ, we are a different person, we have a faith story, we are the salt of the earth. Number two, as salt, we are designed to season and preserve. Preserve the gospel, change the people around us. Number three, uh, the container of salt has to be near where the food is. Number four, salt is worthless in the salt shaker. And number five, we can lose our saltiness if we stay in the shaker and don't get out and use it. Because <clears throat> what happens when you use your salt? It adds to your faith story. I may have told you this before, I, this is not written down, it just came into my spirit. Pam and I used to go on lay witness missions with the Methodist Church. And the first one we ever went on was in Meccan, West Virginia. I think maybe I have told you this. <clears throat> and I was a 20-something snot-nosed ever-know-it-all, unlike today. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a young boy, 15, 16, who came to know Jesus Christ over that weekend on Friday, on Saturday. He was, Saturday night we had a meal and he was running around telling everybody how wonderful Jesus was. He, he, he told 50 people in that building what Jesus meant to him. And on the way home, he and his mother were hit by a drunk driver and he died. And it struck me, it struck me to this moment. The kid didn't have very long to shake the salt out of his shaker, but while he had it, he shook it. And he changed people's lives, including mine. Can you and I say the same? Or do we want to keep our soul in shape where it's safe and comfortable? I knew a man in my birth town who didn't go to church ever. <clears throat> when I asked him why he didn't go to church, he said, what difference does it make? I know Bill Jones, he's the deacon of his church. He goes to church every Sunday. I also know that Bill goes to the Legion Hall every Saturday night and gets drunk, just like I do. I know Bill plays $10 poker and bets on football games, just like I do. I know Bill uses four-letter words whenever he's unhappy, just like I do. I know that Bill takes every advantage of every person he ever ran across to make as much money as he could, just like I do. What difference does it make to go to church? Is that the kind of salt we're spreading? Or are we spreading salt that makes a difference for Jesus Christ? Get out of the salt shaker and change the world for Jesus. Amen. Holy Father, may these words penetrate our hearts. May we understand this is not an option. This is not an option to get out of the salt shaker and change the world. That is who we are. That is the definition of salt in the earth. And we have to realize if we get so comfortable in who we are and where we are and doing nothing, we can lose our ability to change the world on your behalf. And then of what use are we to you? Now, I understand, Father, you don't mean that means we lose our security, our salvation, but that we lose the benefits. We become useless to you. I pray, Father, that people will make a new commitment to share some aspect of their spiritual journey and their faith story with those that they encounter on a daily basis, whatever that looks like. But help us above all else to change our ears, to change the way we hear the world around us, and to be sensitive to the opportunities to say something, to change people, to open their eyes to new possibilities about who you are and what you want from a relationship. I thank you, Father, for blessing this church family the way that you have and protecting us from Satan. We look forward to what you do through us in 2019. And we will try very hard, Father, to be the salt of the earth.